Bun Sen. Mm. Mai? 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 สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Still lockdown edition. So today I wanted to share with you a recipe that I think is the perfect lockdown recipe. It's something called pad wun sen, which is glass noodle stir fry, simply. But it's also known as wun sen pad kai, which means glass noodle stir fried with eggs. Yes, the eggs make this really, really good. We've been on lockdown here in Vancouver for about a month now, and so I've had a lot of time to think about what is the perfect lockdown recipe. Like, what qualities does the dish need to have in order for it to be considered the perfect lockdown dish. So I've concluded that there are five different qualities. One, it has to use ingredients that are easy to, easy to find and last a long time in your fridge. Two, it has to be quick and easy, which you know what? A lot of you may have a lot of extra time on your hands right now, but if you're working from home with kids like we are, you need quick more than anything right now. And then three, it has to be a flexible recipe, meaning that if you don't have all the things that I have, you can substitute the heck out of this dish and it'll still turn out okay. And this is definitely one of those dishes. Four, it should be inexpensive, and that's important because times are tough. A lot of people are having to cut their budgets down, so this is not going to break the bank. And of course, finally, it has to taste good because it's not the happiest times right now, and delicious food is one of those things that's going to brighten your day. And this pad wun sen dish has all of those qualities. I do have a pad wun sen recipe already, but this one has been modified for lockdown. So let's get started. So as many of you know, this year one of our show sponsors is Pine Brand Glass Noodles. And as I was thinking about glass noodle recipe, I realized that this is. The perfect lockdown ingredient because it's easy to find, it's cheap, it's super versatile, and it's really quick to use. So I thought, hey, this is a good opportunity to do something with glass noodles. And res this recipe is also sponsored by Pine Brand. Um, I love Pine Brand again because it's a hundred percent mung bean starch. And when you look for glass noodles, that's what you want to look for, and it will have the best texture. And all you need to do with glass noodles, you soak it in water for about. Uh, seven to ten minutes, just until it's soft and pliable like this. Now, a tip: when you drain it, so I've soaked this and I've drained these. Don't toss it because then what you want to do is you want to cut them with your scissors, okay? Because right now it's a little too long. So just come in a little closer so you can see. So just go right in the middle and cut. There we go. And then it's shorter. It's a little easier to cook, to serve, and all this stuff. And now you can mix them up as much as you want. You can cut them even shorter, especially if you've got. Um, kids, it may be easier for them to, you know, grab the noodles if they're not so long. Now, vegetables. You can substitute whatever vegetables you want. Like as I said, this is a very flexible recipe, but I want to use some really basic, basic stuff. Cabbage, which by the way, if you want to stock up on vegetables, cabbage lasts like three months in your fridge. Something ridiculous like that. Carrots also last a really long time. If you want to make them last longer, make sure they're uh, kept in the bag so they don't lose moisture and become wilty. Uh, so carrots, and then I've got some onions, and some garlic, and some white pepper. Right? These are all things that you might already have in your fridge. They last a really long time. You can find anywhere. For a little extra greenery, you can do some green onions, which you don't have to do. This is totally just you know optional. It will not break the dish if you don't have it. Cilantro, whatever greenery is fine. Also, I want to add a little tip: if you need to stretch your green onions, use only the green part. I usually use the whole thing, but if you want it to last a little longer, uh, leave the white part in water. Just leave this sitting outside, and it will generate more green onions. I don't know where it's drawing substance from. Like, it's just sitting in water. But eventually, more green will come out of here, and so you can stretch it a little bit longer. Um, I have not tested out like how long it will grow, but hey, something to do. And then you can have like a all of your green onion ends in here, and you have a little green onion factory. Oh no, the baby's awake! I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I managed to put him back to sleep. This is my life now. I do everything when he naps and when he goes to sleep at night. 
Anyway, one more thing. This dish always uses tomatoes and it's really important as a bright acidity. Tomatoes may not be something you want to keep right now because it doesn't last very long, but here's a tip. You can use canned drained diced tomatoes. So just canned diced tomatoes, unsalted is better. And you want to drain it See how this juice? And you can keep the juice for soup or whatever. And you can still throw these into a stir fry. It works in a pinch, okay? It doesn't look as pretty, but it's a great little trick. Now, I'm gonna move on to the sauce, which is really simple. I've got in here some oyster sauce, and I'm just going to add some soy sauce. So two parts oyster sauce, one part soy sauce, and then half part, I'm gonna use golden mountain sauce which you've seen me use many times it's a different type of soy sauce you can just use fish sauce or just more soy sauce again this is a really flexible recipe you can substitute the heck out of it and it'll be fine okay and then it does need some sugar a tablespoon might look like a lot but we are making a bunch of noodles and it glass this recipe really does well with a touch of sweetness it will not taste sweet at the end i promise that's it, let's go to the stove, let's cook. So it is now two days later because last time, just as we were about to film this part, the baby woke up and I couldn't put him back to sleep. So we had to wait another day. There you go, working at home with kids. If any of you are experiencing the same thing, I understand. Okay, so now for cooking, I've got a wok right here that I'm heating up. And just FYI for the wok for this, for glass noodles, you do want um, a non-stick wok because the glass noodles can stick a little bit. If you're using a stainless steel or something that's not non-stick, you might just have to scrape quite a bit as you go. Some neutral flavored oil, and I use avocado oil for my sort of everyday cooking. Garlic. And no, the oil isn't hot yet. That's okay. It doesn't have to be right now. Actually, it's kind of nice to add the garlic now so that you know when the oil is hot because the garlic will start to bubble, right? Okay, now the oil is hot. I'm going to add my onions. And for onions, I like to add them early because I like my onions really nice and soft. But if you prefer them sort of like crunchier, you can add them at the end or with the rest of the vegetables. And right now we're infusing the oil with all that garlic and onion flavor, and it is then going to carry that flavor all over our dish. Oh, I'm also gonna add my white pepper here to give it a chance to also infuse into the oil. Just a little bit more oil, it's looking a little dry. Oh no, I'm running out of oil. And while we're waiting for that to cook, I wanna show you a little green onion update. Two days ago, you saw me put the green onion in the cup. This is two days. See, you got a, an, a good inch of green onion here. Where that came from, I don't know, but it's pretty cool. I can see some smallest bits of garlic starting to turn golden. I'm gonna now add my protein. So I'm using, I don't remember if I told you about my protein already. I don't think so, but I'm using ground turkey because um, Normally I would have used ground pork, but hey, for the first time in my life, I went to two stores and there was no ground pork at either of them. Huh, interesting, right? I guess that's the time we're living in. But so ground turkey works. Um, this is dark meat ground turkey. Don't use like ground chicken breast. I did try that once and it's just way too dry. You want something with more flavor, more fat, so definitely dark meat poultry if you're gonna go poultry. And also I wanna point out that um, for budget wise, if you were to use sliced chicken or pork for this, you'll end up needing more to make it look like a reasonable amount. But if you go with ground meat, you don't have to use as much because ground beef, ground meat just kind of distributes itself throughout the dish. So if you're tight on budget, ground meat is a good way to go. A little bit goes a long way. The meat is pretty much done, almost done. I'm gonna now go in with my vegetables. I'm gonna add a little bit of the sauce, just because if I add the sauce all at once when the noodles go in, then all the noodles absorb the sauce. And the vegetables won't get a chance to really absorb that flavor. You gotta spread the flavor love. 
toss that for just like a minute or so just to get the vegetables hot and wilted a bit. So I prepped uh, most of this food last night because I don't have time to be prepping it today um, with the baby. So that's something you can do as well. Cut all the vegetables the night before. Okay, and now the noodles go in with the rest of the sauce. Okay. And here's a little trick. I'm going to put just a little bit of water to rinse out that sauce. And I also find that this dish does need a little extra splash of water anyway, so it works out. And now you're just going to toss, 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 toss until the noodles absorb all that liquid. So as you can see, I'm now using like my home electric stove and the heat on here is so much more um, gentle than the crazy strong gas burner that I normally use on a Thai kitchen. So keep tossing so that everything is evenly distributed. This is a really healthy dish too. As you can see, lots of vegetables, good protein, and glass noodles is, compared to other noodles, is the lowest glycemic index noodles. And it also swells up a lot, so calorie-wise, you're eating less for what seems like the same amount of noodles, is what, if you know what I mean. It's like in Thailand, glass noodles is sort of considered by many people as the the, the diet noodles, should I say. Okay, that's looking good. Now, if this is your first time, I would taste the noodles, see if it needs any more liquid, if it's fully cooked. If it's a little stiff, you can add a splash of water and keep it cooking. But I've done this many times, I know this is good. So now, the eggs are gonna go in. I'm gonna make some space. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil, just so I have <laughs> the last drops of my oil here. And then my eggs go in. Oh yeah, the eggs really make this dish, so don't skip that. I'm gonna just scramble that lightly. You scramble that, like, like get a marbling effect going, right? Now, I'm gonna put all my noodles on top of the eggs. And now let that cook for another 30 seconds. If you have seen my original Pat Winston recipe, I added the eggs earlier and I am changing my mind on that now. Like adding the eggs earlier is sort of the common thing that people do, but I find that the eggs then end up overcooking because then by the time everything else goes in, it's overcooked. So doing it this way with the egg being the last thing keeps the eggs nice and tender. Okay, so now we're gonna flip the eggs. There we go. Woohoo! See, and the egg is perfectly cooked. Oh no! <laughs> escaping food and it's holding on to some of the noodles perfect by the way if you want to know what this wok is uh, i got it as a gift it was like a secret santa thing we did in thailand and it's from korea i forget what the name is it's like a korean brand if you know please tell me in the comments okay tomatoes go in and then you do a final toss I'm gonna switch to tongs now. And I have to be careful because my tongs are metal. So I have to be careful not to scrape the wok with the metal. I actually kind of like using canned tomato for this because the little bit of the juice that does come along adds a nice flavor to the noodles actually. Okay, that is done. See how easy is that? Ooh, almost lost that one. <laughs> okay, yay. Oh, look at that. Ooh. So one of the adjustments that I made for this lockdown version of Pat Wun Sen is it's a much bigger portion because I figured you probably have more people staying at home. All the kids are probably home. Maybe you want to have this for lunch or something. And you know, leftovers are always good. Yes, look at that. And you know what? because this is the second time that I filmed this, I forgot uh, the green onions. So no green onions. Look at these. I just love glass noodles so much. Oh yes. Mm, it's so good. This is like the flavor 
of my childhood. It's such a kid-friendly recipe, yet it's a really popular dish for adults as well. By the way, speaking of like lockdown recipes, glass noodles last at least five years without going bad. Now, five years is like the official statement from the company, but I am sure it will last even longer than that because there's nothing in here, no oils or anything that's gonna go rancid. By contrast, if you've been stocking up on instant noodles, for example, instant noodles will go bad relatively quickly because there's oils and things in those noodles, right? So this is a great one to stop. Now, the key question is, do you think baby Khan will like it? Wun Sen? Yeah. Wun Sen? Oh, my? 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 My mum. Mum. Oh, yes. approved. Yummy. So the recipe as always will be on hatthaikitchen.com. Let me know when you make it, what you think of it, and stay safe, stay home, and see you next time. Sawadee ka. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.